Hey guys, King Kath here with another patch for Sim Settlements 2. This is patch 3.3.0, which I'm calling HQ 3.0, and this is a big one. We have finally got automation systems in HQ. And we also have a brand new quest for those of you guys using SS2 Extended. Now before we go into some of the details and I show you guys how to use some of the new features, we've got to shout out our patrons. You guys are the best. You guys ensure that we're not covering the costs of development, all the costs for maintaining our online presence and servers and massive Google Drive, just massive Google Drive. We have some, I think we're up to four terabytes of files now. Uh, but uh, anyway, I'm gonna shout out a few of you today. And if I don't get to you today, I will in an upcoming video. All right, so huge shout out and thanks to, oh, this is gonna be, right away they're gonna get me, Dr. Doctor 69 oh, I know what that is. We're going to go with the flub, intentional flub there. <laughs> uh, Kirill, so, yep, here's another one, Svedkov. I am sorry, guys. I am going to butcher everyone this week, apparently. Uh, Rebel Don 117 that one I think I got right. Steve P, Cheese Toast, Red T Basco, and Connor. I feel like you guys are trolling me now with a couple of these, <laughs> but thank you guys anyway. Really appreciate the support. All right, let's get into this patch because it's a big one. Um, so before we start showing you the patch stuff, make sure you grab the workshop framework update as well. It has a critical fix in it that uh, will make some of these new features function. So definitely grab workshop framework as well. Um, so we're not gonna show you guys the new quest. I will just tell you that it will launch automatically sometime between internal affairs and the end of chapter three. Or if you're loading up a save that's already finished chapter three, the new quest will start and you will find out because a courier will deliver you a letter the next time you fast travel somewhere in the Commonwealth. So if you're excited to do that first, just bounce around somewhere in the world, just fast travel and look around for a postman to come running up to you. All right, so let's uh, start by going into the MCM settings. Oops, I'm sorry, I went to the holotape there. It is available in the holotape as well, but we're gonna go into MCM because it's a little bit quicker and I'll show you guys the new HQ options and then we'll talk about each of them and then I'm gonna show you a few things related to them. So if we go under gameplay and you go down to HQ, you will find a couple of new things here. This update is heavily focused on HQ, although we do have some other fixes, so definitely check out the full patch notes if you're looking for a particular issue to be resolved. Okay, so the first couple of options here that are brand new, the first three in fact are all new, uh, automated departments. This is the big one. Now it is off by default, but if you play through How to HQ, which is uh, in the middle of chapter two, you will find there's a new scene that uh, wasn't there before. Mansfield's voice actor was kind enough to come back and record some more lines for us so we could get a new scene in there where uh, he insists that you could have the department heads take over a lot of the work of planning out HQ for you. So once you go through that little scene, this will become available. Or if you're loading up a save that's already passed How to HQ, you will also find that this option will suddenly be available and function for you. So you can turn this on and it will let the departments do stuff for you. I'll show you how that works in a moment. Next up, I will also show you this. This is choose department on recruit. So one of the things that happens with HQ recruitment is you send them to HQ and then you have to come back to HQ and start shuffling around all your people. Now you will be able to do it on the fly right there in the settlement when you recruit the new person, which will make things a little more user friendly. And I'll show you how that menu works. And then next we have use task list. And this is a major change to the way HQ works at its core. Uh, but you can turn it off if you were used to the old way and you like the old way and you prefer that. I'll show you how this new task list system works. And uh, I think that is the core of the new ones. And then of course we have the new automation timers. So the automation timers, you will find that by default, when you use the automation system to let your HQ staff do things on their own, that uses a separate timer system from override timers. So override timers is on by default for most of you and basically made it so when you run a project yourself, it's done in like two minutes. With automation, because the staff will be running a lot of projects, if this timer is on like that, the override timer is on, you will find that they are just buzzing through projects really, really quickly and that can start to cause a lot of script backup. So for those of you guys on uh, older systems or Xbox, you're gonna want this off for sure, uh, but you may want to have it off anyway to get a more realistic experience because it will also stagger out the pace that they're actually completing projects as opposed to just doing it almost as quickly as the projects can be read from the file. So this override automation timers, it was separated from override timers because I actually recommend 
automation timers be off and it is off by default. Uh, but for those of you guys who just really quickly want to see an HQ build up, you can turn uh, this system on the override timer and they will build up HQ relatively quickly. It's not instantaneously, not as fast as uh, if you were to build it yourself with override timers on, uh, but uh, fairly quickly. And the, again, the reason is that we needed to stagger things out to, to avoid just overloading the game engine with script requests. And I believe that is all the new stuff. All right, so let's get in and actually show you guys how some of this works. So the task list. So basically the idea of the task list is instead of you having to look and see, do I have enough energy to do particular tasks in here as you find them? You know, you come in, you're digging through all the HQ stuff and you're trying to figure out, do I have enough to do all these things? Um, now instead, if you find something interesting, you can just queue it up. It doesn't matter if you have the resources or not and it will take care of that when the resources are available. So for example, if we look at this Mansfield's improved office, if we were to look and see if we have enough resources, well, we can see up at the top left of our screen there, we only have 19 energy, whereas this requires 20. We do have enough building and organic materials and scrap logistics. Uh, the scrap logistics is disabled by default for those of you not playing in more advanced modes. Um, but uh, if you were having that system on and you have the ex extra data displayed in the lower left on those meters, you know what that is. But anyway, you wouldn't have to think about any of that at all. You can just simply find any project that's interesting and you build it and it will get added to the task list whether or not you have resources available. Then as soon as you exit command mode, anything that is queued up in your task list will be processed. So they will go through and you can see there's an explanation for it. And as soon as the HQ has enough resources to tackle it, they will. And they will basically go through your task list over and over again, looking for opportunities to complete some, some of those tasks, either when you exit command mode or every few hours in the, the game world. So if it finds a task further down your list that it does have resources for, it will do that one. So you can effectively just queue up as much or literally everything, and it will slowly chew through those lists as the department becomes available, as the energy builds up, as you have enough resources, etc. So it's a way for you to find interesting tasks once, queue them up, and not have to wait for the particular resources that you need then you can actually view the task list from the department desk. So each department has their own desk. Facilities is in Mansfield's office. The logistics and engineering are in the common area room and the security and admin are in the meeting room, which I'll go ahead and show you over here. And those two are over here. We've got uh, admin there and security back over there. The medical one, or the, or the science one rather, is in the medical lab, which you build during, uh, is there a doctor in the house? And then lastly, the military one is in Salvador's office, which you will, which you can build after you get to a certain point in the chapter three content. All right, so if we go to facilities, which is the most common one, most of the automation and the task list stuff you'll end up doing in facilities because that has the largest amount of projects. So if we go down here to manage task list, there is the assigned by you. And if we click this here, it will find the list of projects that we queued up that haven't been run yet. So you can see there's Mansfield's office improved. We can look at the cost of the project and you can see there that we are short on facilities energy. So whatever ones are short, they'll be a little bit darkened so you know that that's where you need to put your efforts on. The goal of this system, the task list, as well as the automation, is to kind of shift your focus as the player to be more of a higher level manager. You're kind of more of a recruitment officer. You're gonna go out and find the best people to send back to HQ, and then you can let the HQ staff handle most things for you. Now the task list has another important element to it, and that's that all of your projects take priority over automation. So let's show you guys automation. So if we go to manage and we turn on or we click on automation, you'll see that it's disabled right now. Uh, and that is because it's disabled globally. We haven't enabled it at all. So by default, all of the departments will match the global setting. You can individually turn it off for any individual department. So if you say, for example, I want facilities to build up, but I'll decide when engineering does upgrades, you can absolutely do that. So if we turn on automation in general, then we'll come back to the automation menu one more time and you'll see that there's a turn off and this turn off will only do it for this particular department. If we wanted to turn it off globally, that's what that setting is that I showed you earlier in MCM. So going back to my example, if you decided, hey, I want facilities to go ahead and automate things. And you can see once we enabled it up there, uh, you can already see some projects starting in the facilities menu. So let's say, you know, we don't want engineering to do any tasks automatically. So let's run over to the engineer desk. Excuse me, I got the hiccups apparently. Uh, let's go to the engineering desk and we can disable it just for the engineering department. So oh, that's logistics. We'll go to engineering, automation, and turn off. So now 
facilities will continue to do tasks automatically, but engineering will not. And that can be a good way to pace out your resources. Now, while we're talking about the different departments, primarily the automation affects four major things. First are cleaning up and building the facility, upgrades to the facility with engineering, and then the science department's medical research. Most of the other things were left for you to do manually because we didn't want to you to miss out on some of the big projects or have them happen and you didn't even know. There's some pretty significant projects such as like the ASAM design database which can dramatically change the way you play some settlements too. So those ones are left for you to, to, to do manually. And in the future we'll introduce more and more projects that can be done through the automation system. But uh, note that it is intentional that some of the projects will not automatically run for you. There are some left behind for you, but we wanted to get rid of a lot of the tedious ones so that you can assume that they're happening automatically. So now, right now, if we were to go back to the desk here and go to manage task list, you'll see that there's a new task list there planned by the department, and this is for the automation. Now, at first, this list will take a little while to generate because there are a metric ton of projects. Any of you guys who've poked around in command mode and HQ knows that there are tons and tons of projects. So what the facility department tries to do is queue up all of them. And it will show you the ones right now that it can do in currently based on which ones are unlocked. So it's basically first shows you the ones that you would see in command mode. So you can see they're going to start out by trying to clean a space for Jake's quarters. Then they're going to do loop based quarters, etc. And this will go all the way down uh, to the very last thing, which we could actually find that by going backwards through the list. Let's see what the least the lowest priority repair the roof dome is the last thing. Now, there are a lot more than 46 projects, as many of you know, who've played through all this system, but those are the ones that are currently unlocked. As things become cleaned, for example, that unlocks the construction for that particular room. So then you will start to find on their task list that they've added construction projects as well. And they're done in a particular order so that you will have a more logical HQ. For example, we first want living quarters so you have more space to recruit people. Then you want more job slots so some of the various rooms will build. So all of this is all uh, calculated out, predetermined, so that the facilities department will do a decent job of building up your place. So if we exit this menu, and, and note that there is a cancel project, so if you see they queued up something you absolutely don't want, you can go ahead and cancel it right out of their list. And this will run, and because I have automated override on, each of the projects will just take a couple of minutes. Now, like I said, they're earlier they are staggered, so they're not as quick as if you were to run them manually, uh, but they will still run faster than the than it says in command mode, if, you, if you're familiar with that. Actually, we can pop in and I can show you guys just as a... Quick reminder here, if you see in that uh, a lot of the projects, particularly the building projects, let's see if any of them are available yet. Um, you can see at the top there, completion time one day. So that completion time is ignored if you have automated timer, automated override timers, override automated timers. I, I can't remember what the setting is called already. If you have that uh, override on, uh, then that full day completion time is ignored and instead it will happen in a staggered amount of seconds. So you can see that it looks like we already had one project complete, which means that if we were to go back to our task list, we would see that another project would be queued up there they, that would unlock because hey. suddenly the build project for whatever room they just cleaned will be available. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Go to manage task list, map plan by department. And our first project should be a build project if everything's working correctly. And again, got to give it a moment to load all of this up. And the way that this is controlled in the background is through something that I'm calling a department plan. It's a lot like a city plan or a building plan, only it is for the design of HQ. Now, at this point, we basically have one single department plan that handles everything in HQ, but we are going to update the Atomaker's Toolkit with a mechanism for designers to design a new HQ. So if they want to uh, pick different rooms for different locations uh, or introduce add-on packs that have their own HQ rooms, they'll be able to do so. So watch out for that to be coming relatively soon. It is high on my priority list. But as you can see right there, the first thing on the task list now is to build a uh, four-person room. So they're going to go ahead and get uh, more space for people to live. Now, obviously, the department needs to have the energy for that as well as there have to be appropriate construction materials. So if you see something is stuck in the task list for a long time, hey, you can go ahead you. and look at the cost and see if there are things you can do to improve the situation at HQ. So you are not precluded from being involved with automation on. In fact, like I mentioned, the task list, one of the benefits of that is that your task list always takes priority over theirs. So if you inject some stuff in there, your stuff will be prioritized. Now, on, in both cases, whether it be your task list or the automated one, 
it will skip ahead if there's not enough resources. So our improved Mansfield office, there's not enough space for. But if we go further into this list, so if we go into, let's say, clean up basement, and we look for kind of a cheaper project. So let's see, Northeast Pod here. If we go ahead and put this one in the queue. And we're going to pick our room purpose. Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, and then we exit out here. Now our project will be done, will be queued up immediately because we have plenty of energy to do that. So that will take priority over everything else because we happen to have enough resources to do it. So that way your staff is rarely ever idling. They will constantly try and find new projects to do it. And there you go. You can see the facility's energy usage went up. So we are indeed starting to clean that particular basement room to prepare it for Power Armor Lab. Um, the ultimate, the idea here is that eventually they will build out everything. Um, it will happen in a somewhat sensible order. And the, the more people you send to HQ, the more supply line agreements you set up, the faster they will be able to get through all of their list. So now your role becomes recruiter. So let's show you guys what the new recruit list system looks like. So let's head on over to one of our settlements that has some people in it. Let's see, not Somerville. How about Oberlin Station? Plenty of people to recruit from there. We'll give this a moment. Now, primarily this works the same way. You still use the recruitment clipboard. You still talk to the NPCs. There's just one extra little step and we in general sped up the speed of recruitment by threading it out. So you shouldn't find that there are as large a delays between when you send somebody and when they are actually available to start working in HQ. So let's go ahead and go to our inventory under weapons find our recruitment clipboard and find somebody to talk to here here's our first person I need to get back to diamond city one of these days biggest town i ever saw all right buddy got a here. minute there we go so let me go to work what at hq, work at HQ. and work this part me? works the same way you select gnn from the list send okay. to hq and then you'll get followed up with this and we even had it basically do a a vitamatic scan for you because we know that everybody's going to want that um, and i think not everyone figured out immediately that things are paired to the different stats for hq unless you read the plethora of pop-ups that come up during the how to hq but it's easy to forget those so this is a nice reminder so we can see this person is best suited in the logistics department so if we go ahead and select this uh, sure. It will check if there's enough space, and if so, it will dress them up in the uh, logistics outfit and send them on their way. If there's not enough space, so for example, right now I believe we don't have enough space for administration, so let's go ahead and try and Easy send someone to end. admin. Just wanted to trade a few things. Okay. Oops, we don't know. We don't want to trade. Just looking to trade a little. Sure. Okay, I don't know why this person is not eligible to go to HQ, but that is why the uh, recruitment options not coming up so let's find somebody else to talk to how about you buddy yeah nope you're a, you're a visitor oh here's everybody over at the bar got a dangerous look about you hope you ain't here for me uh oh we've got we got music we got music threatening to threatening to boot our video off of youtube Lost get out of here with that get out of here with that you ain't been up to see great guard you should go <laughs> all right guys all right take it easy robots. take it easy bookseller hi there for trouble i hope no i want you to work at hq would you be interested in coming to work for me all right, send them to GNN. And now Charisma, obviously not their best stat, but just to show you guys how this works, um, it'll immediately check. They'll see there's no no space, so you know that maybe you want to go back to HQ and add to your task list something that provides more jobs for that particular department. So this will help guide you. You're not meant to be totally out of the system. You can absolutely get involved if you want. Um, but the nice thing is, is you can swap departments later. Those of you guys who have played it a lot know that you can have unlimited people in facilities. So if you find that all your other departments are full, you can always send them sure. to facilities. They will help build up the place and then you can come huh? back and juggle them around later. Uh, so you're welcome to go back into the HQ menu. You can still assign people to different departments later on. And our default plan that we came up with for the automation yes. results in you having space for something like 85 people who can live in HQ in addition to having uh, 20 plus job slots for all of the departments or at least most of them. So you should be in good state to build whatever the HQ organization you want to have the uh, appropriate number of people in each department so you can do those projects that you like. So I hope you guys enjoy this update. There is a ton to play around with, and I think it will fundamentally transform the way you view HQ with these new systems. Now, this is not the end of HQ. HQ 3.0 is hardly the end of that. There are a lot more things I want to do with it. Probably going to be a 4.0 update to it at some point. Uh, in the interim, though, we'll be going back to our... our 
I want I was about to say two to three week pat week patch cycle, but I'm about to go on vacation. So probably going to be like a three to four week patch cycle where we'll get those quality of life things in little bits and pieces to uh, help you enjoy some settlements even more. All right, so now that we've made it to the end of this rather lengthy patch notes video, let's do our giveaway. So those of you guys who watch these videos to the end, I'm going to give you a hashtag. And if you leave a comment below with the hashtag and something else interesting for me to read, give me a fun story, a bug report, uh, uh, tell me a Sim Settlements joke, whatever, just something interesting in the uh, comments to go with this hashtag. And I will grab one of you guys to hook up with some free Sim Settlements merch. All right, your hashtag today is automation. Hashtag, hashtag automation is uh, this new automation system is, it's really fun. It's really, really fun to play with HQ with this new system and I can't wait to get your guys' feedback. All right guys, take care and enjoy the month.